Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good afternoon out there, everyone, and welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today. I'm your host, Jason Salzman, joining you from right here in the Muskogee Media Studios as we get ready for another great show. We've got lots of things to talk about, lots of interesting things going on as we get deeper and deeper into fall. Of course, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So many, many events and things to cover here at the Muskogee Creek Nation. We'll get to those after a while. Also, got some features for you today. Not only did we uh, make the rounds around and get some of our stories, but we will also have an in-studio guest with us. As I said uh, just a minute ago, it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Having said that, having into the studio was an easy choice this week. Miss Sean Partridge, uh, she is the manager of our Family Violence Prevention Program here at Muskogee Creek Nation. She does a wonderful job and she will be with us after we go to this first break. Don't go anywhere, you're watching Native News Today. We believe if you teach a man to fish, you can feed him for a lifetime. We believe that transitioning convicted citizens back into our communities enhances public safety. We believe that every citizen, even ex-prisoners, are important and are capable of change. We believe in reclaiming our citizens and investing them back into a culture that embraces healing and restoration. We believe in reintegration. It's more than just an associate degree. It's a life-changing experience. You'll see a lot of cultural features here on the campus. You'll see a symbol of the mound, which goes back to the history of, of Muscogee people as being in that Mississippian time period, that mound building society. That really welcomes our students whenever they first get here. The college in itself is beyond the building, is the people. They're passionate, very passionate about what they teach, and it shows whenever they're teaching. The instructors and the administration, they really believe in their students here. After a couple classes, I began to notice that it kind of felt as if I were returning back to something, something that has been lost for like a long time. As I learned more about the history of my people, to discover that there were very many great people that did a lot of good things for their people, for their nations, and that those people were American Indian and Native American, it kind of brings out a sense of pride that was not really there before. There is a future for our people. All right, welcome back to Native News Today. And as I promised you, I have a special guest with me in studio now, Ms. Sean Partridge. She is the director of our Family Violence Prevention Program here at Muskogee Creek Nation. Sean, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Jason, for having me. It's always great to have you in studio and on the program, really. Great friend of mine, but also mm -hmm. a great ambassador for this tribe. You do wonderful work in your department. And the reason I wanted to have you on, of course, is October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Now, for you all in your department, Department. It's a big month, uh, goes without saying, but it's become a big month too at other tribes, a lot of, around Indian country. We're really talking about this now. It's become a big topic of conversation. That's got to please you just at the fact that we're actually putting this at the forefront now. Absolutely. Certainly um, October for Domestic Violence Awareness Month is gaining a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month right. as well. But certainly all the work that tribes are doing across Oklahoma and across the nation is uh, bringing special attention to this issue that's mm -hmm. plaguing so many of our communities. Yeah, and I know that uh, for you, you've, you've been in this for a long time. Um, still a very young lady, but <laughs> I've been in it a long time doing lots of, of work. Um, and 
just in the last few years, you've been able to do a few milestone things. When I say you, I mean the department as well, but you, you all have been able to do some really milestone things. You've been to Washington, D.C. to see mm -hmm. VAWA reauthorized. That must have been such a moment for you. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. I, to be invited to go and, and witness that signing on, um, yeah, at an invitation from the White House, mm -hmm. um, I was coming back from maternity leave. Mm -hmm. um, my child was eight weeks old, mm -hmm. and so it was a tough decision to make, uh, but to participate and see our president sign that historic legislation that really has some significant pieces for Indian country was mm -hmm. truly amazing. And so so certainly, I mean, our, our program and um, our nation has been very active in these efforts. Mm -hmm. And um, as you mentioned, um, we're a staff of many, and so, um, uh, you know, all of our staff is working really hard to create change within our, our nation and our communities within our tribal jurisdiction. Yeah, and what's great is you guys aren't just uh, working on that, you're doing it. You know, mm -hmm. we've seen change, we've seen uh, things become uh, better and more awareness and, and you all are using so many different avenues, whether it be social media, through us, doing mm -hmm. different projects, commercials, PSAs, things like that. You're really, you know, all hands on deck with this as far as all the resources pulling it together. And that's probably made it easier on you as well, too, to come up with new ideas and things like that and, and new ways to get your message out. Absolutely. And, and as you had mentioned, um, the support from your office, mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have been amazing, too, in helping <laughs> us spread this message. Yeah. Um, um, certainly, whether it's this show, um, the radio show, mm -hmm. um, your Facebook pages, mm -hmm. the, the stories that your staff are um, writing about mm -hmm. the work that's being done. And so, um, for us to utilize those different resources and outlets, of course, is tremendous yeah. with the move towards technology and Facebook and keeping people updated and um, um, aware of services mm -hmm. and events and activities that right. we have going on has been very helpful. Yeah, and, and another thing I wanted to uh, discuss with you is this past weekend, you know, one of our you know, Indian country nationwide, one of our champions really for the cause we're talking about is, is our one of our very own, a Muscogee mm -hmm. Creek citizen, Sarah Deer. You were able to actually be uh, an invited guest mm -hmm. of Miss Sarah Deer as she received induction into the Muscogee Creek Nation Hall of Fame uh, this past weekend. Uh, that must have been a really neat moment for you to be there uh, with Sarah for that moment. Absolutely, she's so deserving of that recognition and always has been a tremendous support of our program mm -hmm. and our staff. Uh, uh, not only a friend but a mentor mm -hmm. to me anything I mean with that sort of career and just the contributions that she has made and then to make herself so available and to be so supportive of our program and the work that we're doing here at home is just tremendous yeah and and we've followed her career a little bit mm -hmm. as long along with you of course and and seen some of the things and she actually got a book out now too so yes. I mean even delving into that and uh, uh, was recently awarded a fellowship just to just oh, and doing incredible things making us so proud but at the end of the day much like you Sarah is always going to be I'm just a piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. and and that is this this movement uh, to see the statistics that we've seen that are bad mm -hmm. and start to just chip away at those numbers and and I think we're doing that I always ask Absolutely. you about numbers and I don't need you to throw out specifics mm -hmm. but I think we're improving I mean mm -hmm. you guys have probably seen that just in the numbers itself really too Absolutely, and, and having just finished our quarterly report, um, during this last quarter we provided services to 74 survivors of domestic and or sexual violence. Certainly the numbers are increasing. In 2009 mm -hmm. we served only 59 victims, mm -hmm. and then as of last year had served 239. Wow. And while we might think that's a bad thing, it's really not. That's a good right. sign that's because right. all the work that we've done in terms of promoting our program, expanding exactly services, placing advocates out within our jurisdiction at Eufaula and then also in Wetumpka. Mm -hmm. um, it goes to show that people know where they can call to mm -hmm. get help and, and where to go. And yeah. so just um, the increase in numbers can be alarming for mm -hmm. people, but it really is a good thing because yeah. just because people weren't coming and in 09 we only served 59 victims, it didn't mean that domestic and sexual violence wasn't occurring oh, was at that yeah. time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It meant that 
people didn't really know where right. to go, you know, to get services and support and resources. That's exactly the way I look at it. You know, you guys are providing all these resources. The hardest thing for victims to do is taking that first step. Mm -hmm. And when they see things from you all that make them a little more comfortable about it, it makes it easier. They come and get, uh, you know, those resources and are able to make a difference in their life. Sean, please stay with me. After, uh, let's go to a break real quick. You come back for a sure, segment. Absolutely. All right, great. Let's take a quick break. We'll go. Uh, we'll be right back with Sean Partridge here as we recognize Domestic Violence Awareness Month here on Native News Today and at the Muskogee Creek Nation. Looking for your next 18-hole adventure? Then take a look at Fountainhead Creek Golf Club. Nestled in the beautiful confines of Lake Eufaula State Park, large sloping greens and well-placed bunkers characterize the Muskogee Creek Nation's Floyd Farley design course and offers a fine test of skill for any golfer. Stay up on all the latest gear and equipment with a visit to our pro shop. Have lunch at the turn at the Clubhouse Grill. We're waiting to accommodate you at Fountainhead Creek. Give us a call at 918-689-3209 or visit fountainheadgolf.com to book your next round. Fountainhead Creek Golf Club, close to home, far from ordinary. I think like creatively I was just into drawing for a long time, like ever since I was a kid. It wasn't until maybe around late 2007, 2008 that I became aware of uh, the graffiti scene. It, it changed everything for me. You don't even really understand in the beginning what kind of journey it's going to take you on, but I think that in order to become great at what you do, it really, it really boils down to how you feel about yourself and how you feel about your own artistic creativity and your own expression. You know, I, I just, I think it, it comes from like a belief in oneself and pushing yourself to the limits as far as you can take it. And we're back here on Native News today. As I said, Sean Parcher would be back with us here for one more segment before we let her get going. We know she's a busy lady, but Sean, um, talking about Domestic Violence Awareness Month here, October, and as she said, there's other things going on too, but it's a very busy month for you all. Talk about some of the things that you've been a part of as part of this month and really some of the things that are ahead of us too. Sure, so every year for um, October Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we try to mix up the activities and the events that we do. In the past, we've had guest speakers, we've had panels uh -huh. um, that include survivors of domestic violence. And so this year, Mitzi and Tanya, two of our advocates, had come up with a great idea for us to utilize In Her Shoes, which is an interactive activity that allows participants um, to break up into groups. Uh -huh. They um, select or provided a character that that is based on um, a real life experience of a, a victim of domestic violence. And so we basically transformed the dome um, into 17 different stations that represent anything from um, tribal court to um, uh, uh, DHS to um, police station to a shelter right. and so participants um, make decisions um, regarding you know the depending on the the different situations and will travel throughout those different stations really kind of getting to experience what it's like and what victims go through mm -hmm. um, the many challenges and barriers that they face and trying to um, get safe mm -hmm. and leave an abusive relationship so and the feedback we've had one day of sessions so far our next session is coming up next week right. and they filled up quickly mm -hmm. um, which we didn't anticipate and right. so we're very um, um, happy to see that sure. and the feedback has just been amazing and um, Jessica McBride came and participated we're really excited about that and then mm -hmm. wrote about her experience too yeah, yeah first-hand account right there in the paper and that's what I was we were kind of talking about you and I alluding to is the fact that more and more of our citizens are seeing stories on this, they're mm -hmm. seeing uh, PSAs, they're seeing this interview now, mm -hmm. and they're seeing that, you know, it's it's not as bad as it seems to reach out for some help, mm -hmm. and there are things, and it's, it's more comfortable, and, you know, there are great advocates in your office that are willing and able and, and ready to assist in any way that they can. Um, it's just such a wonderful thing. I'm glad that you talked about the workshop because it's such a wonderful idea. Not only did Jessica from uh, our paper get the chance to go over there, but I got a chance to go over there as well mm -hmm. and, and do a story and feature on it. So um, we were going to show you that now, but Sean, I want to thank you so much for being here with us today. I want to thank you for all the wonderful work that you 
you do and all of your staff, please pass along. Uh, they do a fantastic job day in and day Thank out. you very much, you Jason. All right. Well, as I said, I went over to the Dome, the uh, Family Violence Prevention Program in her shoes. And sometimes we walk a mile in her shoes. This year, we're actually in her shoes, the process. And uh, definitely wanted to show you this piece here as we let Sean get going. And we'll be back uh, after this uh, segment here with the rest of the program. So today we're doing a simulation for the community. Uh, we pretty much invited everybody, but we're doing a simulation. It's called In Her Shoes, and it's where people can go through the simulation and they, can, they actually will walk through the shoes of a victim and what that person goes through. So there's 17 stations, each station represents a different agency that a victim may access or a service that they may access through the process. So that's kind of what people are going to be going through today. What we tried to do was really have it mirror our tribal community and so we took the the curriculum and we tried to have the simulation reflect what this would look like here at Creek Nation or within our own boundaries so that's why you know our stations reflect if a, a victim needed a protective order through tribal court or they needed to go to our Department of Health for services or even our behavioral health for services. So we really tried to have it reflect what we have going on here at the nation for people that are seeking services. The experience of trying to walk in a victim's shoes, so far everyone has, um, I don't want to use the term enjoyed because of what it is, but I think it has really opened and broadened people's um, eyes as far as what a victim may actually face and the hurdles and the struggles as far as leaving an abusive relationship. And so far, everyone's feedback has been that they really enjoyed it and again, it has really educated and I think something they want to see continue throughout the community. We chose um, for our hoodies it says hashtag why I stayed because we really want to put that's you know kind of a myth that victims choose to stay uh, and people have a misconception that it's really a choice and what we hope through this simulation is that they learn that that in fact is not the case and that leaving is actually the most dangerous time for a victim and even if um, maybe they're not um, completely afraid they're going to be murdered or killed, which unfortunately is a possibility. There's still so much fear and so many roadblocks that they face. And I do think this helps people understand and then actually know how to actually help someone in this situation and not say, well, why does she keep going back? Or why does she stay? Or why doesn't she leave? Because in educating people that that is the most dangerous time, I think we're more sensitive in how we work with our clients. All right, thanks Sean Partridge once again for being with us in studio. We love having in studio guests and just a few weeks ago on the program had Justin Giles, our Cultural Center and Archives Department Director here at Creek Nation in studio talking about a canoe project. They brought a log, a poplar log, back from Alabama, our homelands. It was just about 15 minutes from Horseshoe Bend. This log has seen and heard many, many thanks from our people. Now it's being made into a canoe for the Cultural Center and Archives Department and we went over for the first stages of this process. I'm out here to teach the Muscogee Creeks here in uh, Okmulgee to build a dugout canoe. We, we were people of the water. We lived on the rivers and canoes were critical and there's literally uh, evidence that there were thousands and thousands and thousands of canoes back in Alabama and Georgia so they were ubiquitous they were everywhere and for us to do this here is probably the most appropriate thing we could do I think as far as the tribal skill to pass down 
this canoe has particular uh, significance. Uh, we got two logs from this tree. One of those logs will be used to build a canoe at Horseshoe Bend Military Park, which is the site, of course, of the last battle of the Creek Indian War. And the other will be built here. So that's a kind of a continuation of the past. We've got a canoe at the last site and a canoe at the new country. Right now we're just doing kind of what we call stock removal. We're removing wood. And we're removing wood. This is a green log, so we can't burn it. And uh, we're using modern tools, chainsaws, axes, and uh, all kind of cutting tools to get this stock out. And then as we uh, get the log dry, then we will start the burning process. So we'll be here five days this week. Should have the bulk of the removal work done uh, at the end of this week. Then we'll let it dry uh, for about three or four months. And uh, our plans, we're going to finish a canoe at uh, Horseshoe Bend next March during the festival, which is kind of a commemoration of the battle. And uh, what we hope to do is to finish this canoe at about the same time, coincidental with the completion of that canoe. So two projects, two separate events, and yet we hope to tie them together that way. We hope to bring some of the people from Oklahoma back to Alabama to finish that canoe as well. So today, uh, today we're at the uh, Muscogee Nation Dome here on the Chaba Complex here in Okmulgee. Uh, we're witnessing the first day, the actual carving of a uh, traditional poplar log dugout canoe that our Muscogee ancestors would have utilized back in the day, if you will, again, going back to 1800s, 1700s, 1600s and beyond. Um, and what we're doing here essentially is now we've brought this canoe back or this log back from the uh, Horseshoe Bend, Alexander City, Alabama area. And um, this is now October 13th, uh, second week of October, which we're actually going to start Phase two, phase one was actually processing the log in Alabama and bringing it back here to Oklahoma. Phase two now is actually carving the log out a little bit and we brought in Butch Fuller, who's actually from the Alexander City area there in Alabama, who is a renowned, uh, I guess you'd say a wood craftsman in that area. He's done canoes before. Uh, he's done a lot of log cabins that he's restored, even old Muscogee cabins back in the 1800s as well too. So a lot of knowledge with him that we've contracted to bring him out to really help us you know, to educate ourselves on how this process would have been done in the most traditional manner as we can. Uh, again, we're not necessarily trying to recreate a traditional canoe. What we're trying to do is remember our traditional life ways and our traditional materials. I'm um, bringing this here to Creek Nation and again, reminding us about our ancestral homelands, reminding us about the process of what uh, we would have done to make our way in the world. Again, those canoes back in the day, back in Alabama, would have been our SUVs, our four pickup trucks going along the highways, which would have been uh, Tallapoosa, the Coosa River, all those rivers that were there. Um, so for us, it's kind of just, again, bringing back a little bit of home here in Oak ok Mogi here and uh, kind of remembering who we are as people as well. Okay, moving along in our coverage, as I said on the beginning, in the beginning of the program, uh, October, lots of things happening uh, in and around Creek Nation. We are recognizing Breast Cancer Awareness Month, also Domestic Violence Awareness Month, but also last week, uh, at the beginning of the week, Columbus Day is slowly but surely becoming no more in this country. We're having Indigenous Peoples Day all across America, and that happened right here at Muscogee Creek Nation as Principal Chief Tiger declared it Indigenous Peoples Day here at Creek Nation in Almaghi. <laughs> Be it resolved that I, George Tiger, Principal Chief of the Great Muscogee Creek Nation, do hereby proclaim this day, October 12, 2015, as Indigenous Peoples Day in commemoration of 500 years of survival and renewal of Native cultures in the face of political and cultural repression. I urge our citizens, constituents, partners, agents, and members of our tribal communities to unite in the observance of this Indigenous right 
and in honor of indigenous culture and philosophy to empower the Muscogee Creek Nation with the fundamental support for ongoing programs for our indigenous people's health and well-being. I have here to set my hand and seal on this day, October 2015, George Tiger, Principal Chief. Well, I think it's important that we bring a you know, spotlight to indigenous, indigenous people, especially today. Uh, I know that I just signed off on a letter uh, encouraging the uh, elected officials of Oklahoma City that meet tomorrow to really think about changing uh, to Indigenous Day with uh, Oklahoma City. You know, we have some other communities that's doing that, and we want to encourage all of our municipalities and, and cities within our jurisdiction if they would really consider following the um, really the lead of uh, some of our smaller communities uh, throughout Oklahoma. Well, if, I think there's one thing that we've done as a nation, and I know other uh, tribal nations are looking at, is uh, developing a curriculum for our local public school systems that really tell the true story. Uh, I know for a number of years, the Oklahoma history books just really didn't have it right in terms of who we are. Uh, many assume that there's only five tribes because in, that, in the Oklahoma history book, that's who they refer to the most. But we have 39 working, viable tribal governments that's making an impact on who we are as the state of Oklahoma. Uh, we have certainly overcome oppression as a, as a native people. We've overcome many things, and we're making a big impact on who we are, what we do as the state of Oklahoma. And as, um, as uh, citizens of the, uh, this great nation that we all live and share. They're looking at doing the same thing that we're doing is to uh, proclaim this day as Indigenous Peoples Day. And I think, uh, I really see this taking a domino effect across Indian country and uh, I know that it's something that we would all like to see become reality regardless of who we're leading as tribal, tribal leaders. All right, that'll wrap up another episode of Native News Today. We hope you enjoyed the program. I want to thank everybody that made it happen from our Cultural Center and Archives Department. Also, our Family Violence Prevention Program does a wonderful job. Sean Partridge, want to thank her again for stopping in. Principal Chief George Tiger uh, proclaiming Indigenous Peoples Day here at Creek Nation. What a great thing there. And so we just really had a full show, really enjoyed putting it together this week. Also, want to tell you folks out there, Plenty of time to get out to Council Oak Park today uh, for the Council Oak Ceremony. We'll have more on that next week on the program, of course. But if you're in and around the Tulsa area right there in downtown, go by and see the Council Oak Ceremony. It's uh, really something that's very, very near and dear to so many Ms. Muscogee Creeks and really it's a, a chance to really cel celebrate our heritage and the beginnings of Tulsa there with the city officials and all kinds of Creek Nation dignitaries as well. So go on out. It's happening all day out at Tulsa Community Center afterwards as well. So it's plenty of food, fun, uh, and fellowship for the whole family. Check us out on YouTube on our online channel. If you can't get us here on KSBI or CW, we always love having you on there as well. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, all of our social media sites. For Jared Moore, Devaney Luxing, I'm Jason Salzman. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.